Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and back yet again for yet another Spider-Man the Animated Series video. This time though, we're not doing a retro shiz, it's a little bit of a re-retro shiz, right? So, these are straight from Hasbro Pulse, hopefully later, maybe Shop Disney as they kind of alluded to, but this is Spider-Man the Animated Series Retro VHS Tape Set 2, featuring Doc Ock and Aunt May, as you can clearly see all over the box, and if you have the first set with Spider-Man and Carnage, then it's starting to look like you have a really cool old-fashioned VHS collection. On the back side of the box, some nice photos, some old school artwork brought back to life. It looks good for what they got going on. And I definitely do like the renders, especially on Aunt May. We'll talk about that more later. But in the meantime, well, this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new, the Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man, the animated series, retro VHS 2-pack featuring Doc Ock and Aunt May. And just before we get started, I want to say a special thank you to the folks over at Bones Coffee. If you're not familiar with Bones, well, they make coffee. And right now, they have a brand new Spider-Man coffee and it's awesome and it's called the web slinger it's crispy marshmallow treat flavored coffee natural and artificial flavors of course it's a medium roast i'm more of a, a dark roast like i like it black and bitter you know what i'm saying but the artwork is amazing all over the packaging and if you ever have any questions hey reach out support at bonescoffee.com now on the back side of the packaging you'll see they're part of the rainforest alliance and they only buy coffee from rainforest alliance certified farms which help protect the environment and farming communities so i definitely appreciate that you can find out more about bones coffee at bonescoffee.com and i definitely dig the smell me test right there squeeze and sniff yeah definitely smells like marshmallow treats and at first i was thinking okay how does that really coincide with spider-man oh well Pulled apart, marshmallows, gooey, sticky, webs. I think that's what they're going for. And I like that they have a resealable pouch on the old bag. Simply just pull that there, open it up, and you can clearly see the coffee inside. There you go. So yes, this is more of a light roast, right? Medium, as they say. So I threw a bunch into my little French press right here. Again, I'm going to gently fill it up. I want it to be a little bit stronger, right? Let it sit for a good... 10-15 minutes if you'd like and just dump it into any corresponding spider-man mug you have lying around as we all do i'm sure right and you can give it the old taste test right here and i'll be honest with you it's a little bit light as much as i tried to build up the taste a little bit i think it's perfect for those that are just coffee people oh i like a little coffee here and there good for those that like a cup or two definitely not going to give you the coffee shakes unless you're going to be tackling about six or seven but as far as the taste goes, it's definitely there, and it smells good to boot. Also, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of creamer and all that, but layered that you can get from Costco, it yeah, definitely tastes good. Highly recommend that. But the Spider-Man Web Slinger Coffee is available at BonesCoffee.com. Definitely go and check them out now. Thank you very much to Bones for sending this out. This was a lot of fun. If you'd like to see me team up more with different coffee companies, leave me a comment below. Tell me your favorite coffee company, and let's get back to the video. Now, here's everything out of the two-pack box set. And I gotta tell you, it's really light on the accessories. For me, mainly, I like to see a lot of deep dive, deep cut accessories for animated properties with action figures. Aunt May comes with a pair of fists, which is really funny because it's like, why? Why would Aunt May come with a pair of fists, right? There is so many different accessories, if you could call a pair of extra hands, accessories right but i mean you could have given her a bonnet head wrap sort of deal you can get her a past due late bill right that was from the animated series episode one you could give her a coffee pot how fitting for this video right cup of coffee cup of tea heck you could give her an aunt anna if you wanted to right that would be kind of cool an aunt anna and aunt may two pack or just a hospital bed right she seems to be in that more often than not and i'm definitely not going to sugarcoat this that is a Pretty terrible face sculpt. <laughs> now, on one hand, I am so ridiculously stoked they gave us Aunt May from Spider-Man the Animated Series. So for them to make this, I'm like, cool, right? Very happy with it overall because from the feet to the neck, we're good. Except when you get to the head portrait where 
They did the whole realism thing, and it doesn't really work when it comes to the animating. Few less lines would have been great. The neck and the head really situate weird. She's going to be looking down. If you really had the head positioned correctly, like it is now, she's looking down. You really have to pull the ball joint, pop it forward, angle the neck, and then you can get her to look forward. And then she's got this big gapitude uh, behind her head, which it looks part of her skull is missing. Other than that, I'm stoked on this figure. Articulation aside, she just stands there. Aunt May really doesn't do much except for complain or make Peter toast, and that's about it. Her pencil skirt is not going to allow much movement. You can kind of get the knees going. You can kind of move the legs. She's got the feet. She's got the arms. You get the idea. It's Marvel Legends articulation. But that aside, that is season one, Aunt May through and through. You got the tie. You got the blue coat. You got the purple skirts. The face aside, because we can all agree, no bueno. I'm just stoked they made Aunt May. That's all I can really say on that. And as much as you can do things with Aunt May, aside from just standing there, she can beat up the Hobgoblin, if you want, right? She can whack Venom in the head with her purse, which she could have had a purse, right? She can battle Hydro Man, remember that episode? And she can go on a date with Hammerhead, right? All jokes aside, she does look good with the animated Spider-Man. So again, I'm very happy with the way that she came out. I'm stoked they made an out May. And I think this is the best we're going to get because I don't see them ever making another animated series spider-man aunt may or you can call it the aunt mated series right doc ock on the other hand no pun intended comes with a pair of fists that makes sense for doc ock that's pretty cool and he has four mechanical arms as a doc ock should right now a couple things here and there this time around we got bendy wire tentacles they're pretty bendy they're bendy enough i would say they're not incredibly bendy, but I think that that's where a little bit of bendiness really does go a long way, right? So you get some momentum and articulation out of them. At the top, you can clearly see you get two closed and you get two open tentacles. And you can pop these off if you want and mix them around if you want. Although that's where I think extras of these, like if you had four closed, four open, maybe two flat, you could interchange what Doc Ock is having. Maybe even having one holding a Spider-Man mask as he unmasked Peter Parker in the Insidious 6 two-part. Now, the closed tentacle arms can hold some things. If it's small enough to fit in there, it can grasp. But then again, you don't have anything for him to hold. Maybe some beakers, maybe some science stuff, maybe something like that. And again, that's where some deep cut straight from the animated series accessories would have been good. Also, the Ock tentacles are fairly accurate, at least on this side. But once you turn it around, it has more of that comic book look. And that's where they said potentially you could backwards compatible this with your prior released comic book, Dr. Octopus. More on that in just a few. The actual figure for Dr. Octopus is a friggin' home run. If I could just point out the fact that this is what I've been asking for, for years and years. This is the animated series Dr. Octopus. It's not the animated series angled face, very animated, but it's a realistic take on Doc Ock, and I love that they gave him the glare on his glasses. The head portrait is okay. Extra head portraits would have been great. Grit in his teeth, maybe a web in your face kind of deal. That would have been awesome, but they nailed the haircut, the look. I, I am stoked on this. This is what I want to see. And this is really where I'm at with Marvel Legends. More of this, please. This is perfect. The colors, the yellows, the oranges. The oranges might be a little bit too bright. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. It's fine. It's fine for what it is. He's pinless. He looks sleek and looks great. He's got dual articulation at the neck. In terms of his arms, they will hit into his giant shoulder pad. So they'll only go up so far. Bicep, double jointed elbows, but the gauntlets on his gloves are so big, he's really kind of more single-jointed, to be quite honest with you. And he does have enough rotation in the hands. It's the usual Marvel Legends. But again, 
pinless. He looks sleek. He's got some well-hidden thigh articulation. I totally dig that. That just looks clean cut right there. Plus, he's got double jointed knees, which sure, that totally works. He's got feet up and down, left and right, peg holes on the bottom. You get the idea. That's a nice looking Dr. Octopus. That is straight from Spider-Man the Animated Series. He wouldn't say that this is based off Spider-Man the Animated Series or alluding to the Animated Series. This is the Animated Series through and through. And I'm stoked on that, if you couldn't already tell. Now, installing the tentacles, pretty easy peasy. For the most part, once you kind of get the hang of it, the first time I did it, I was like, man, is this hard? Why is this? It goes right in. You get the idea. And for the most part, they stay pretty well. I'm saying in terms of falling over. So you get all four tentacles in. And to be quite honest with you, I mean, that's a, a really cool looking Spider-Man the Animated Series Dr. Octopus. Again, I could not be more stoked. Some nitpicks aside, some added things aside, this is what I've wanted to see for years and years. They nailed it. This is Spider-Man the Animated Series, Dr. Octopus, more of this, please. When you want to get him elevated, that's where I'm going to tell you, you kind of have to figure it out, but after a while, because he doesn't really have stabilizers, you know what I mean? You can get the bendy wires to kind of work for you here and there, but that's where I think a more flat-footed octopus tentacle would have been good, or even a stand, right? Because after a while he falls, it every single time. I mean, if you can get him to stand, good on you. Even when you have the octopus tentacles up, you wanna hold the Spider-Man, he's gonna fall over. He's very back heavy when you angle the tentacles a certain way. You kinda have to do it, one in the back, one in the front, maybe put one up, one off to the side. That's what worked for me. In terms of the scalature, from Spider-Man to Aunt May to Dr. Octopus, it's awesome. This is so much fun to have from going from watching the cartoon, Toy Biz, and then what, 32 years have gone by, and then Hasbro finally said, yeah, let's uh, let's do some Spider-Man animated figures because there's a lot of Spider-Man animated fans out there and this is what we're looking for. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that at one point, Dr. Octopus kept wearing a trench coat <laughs> to blend in, right? Well, if you have the Playmates Ninja Turtle trench coat that just sort of came out, you can kind of reenact that scene from the Insidious 6 two-parter, right? Kind of, sort of. It looks goofy. But when you get the jacket open and you got all four Dr. Octopus tentacles going, it does look pretty good. I'm nerding out for this, not gonna lie. Even though Spider-Man's kind of looking at him like he's just gotten flashed, right? The coat, depending on if you want to go this route, it's a little big. Let's just say that, to be honest with you. Kind of bunches up. It looks better on the front than it does in the back. But it's the trench coat from the animated series. And don't forget, at some point in that two-parter, and Peter Parker did end up wearing one himself. Although, I'm going to be honest with you, yeah, I would not recommend it for old Peter Parker. It's, it's entirely too big. It works more for Dr. Octopus because he's got the shoulder pad. He's got the thing on the back. It just kind of stretches it out a little bit better. When you look at the old Toy Biz Dr. Octopus... Look how far we've come. Check that out. And I used to think that that was spot on for Toy Biz, right? Back in the day. Heck, even the old McDonald's Dr. Octopus, that was a much better Dr. Octopus, hands down across the board, until now. So finally, we have an awesome Doc Ock Spider-Man the Animated Series figure. And you can totally go the route of Partners in Danger. Getting the Black Cat going. Doc Ock is going for the Owsback fortune. He's screwing up Kingpin's plans. And as a result, we get John Hardesky into the mix. Felicia Hardy, his daughter, ends up getting the Super Soldier Serum, and she becomes Black Cat, which was awesome. Here's Web in Your Eye. Now, in terms of old comic book Dr. Octopus to this animated series Dr. Octopus, they did say that you could backwards compatible the whole tentacles. Well, I'm gonna tell you in all honesty, these bendy wire tentacles don't really work that well. In fact, even getting them in, I'm kinda worried you're gonna end up damaging the tentacles. However, on the flip side, the prior release non-bendy wire tentacles do work for the animated Dr. Octopus. In fact, they work quite well. Now, you're gonna lose the bendy wireness of them. They fit a little better and they form fit the look of this Dr. Octopus like don't get me wrong I like the bendy wire but in actuality this just seems to work a whole heck of a lot better 
and it's a whole heck of a lot less cumbersome. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends straight from Hasbro Pulse, the exclusive two pack from Spider-Man the Animated Series featuring Doc Ock and Aunt May. And from looking at Symbiote Spider-Man, Alien Costume Spider-Man and Carnage from the first two pack, I mean, it is night and day in terms of what they did here to go from just like, yeah, that's the bare minimum to two really good figures minus Aunt May's head portrait. Couple qualms here and there. I'm absolutely stoked to have these figures. However, I will say for the price point, for what they're offering, you gotta go more deep cut. You gotta do it. But I digress. Thank you again to Bones Coffee as well for sending out the coffee. That was awesome to try. You've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Spider-Man, the animated series. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, up next, Green Goblin and Mary Jane. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Adios.